my Chris. Oh, hello, Janet. Explain yourself. Explain what? Brooding on the balcony. Just isn't being done this season. I wasn't brooding. Lying to one's sister's out this season, too. Strangest thing happened. I thought I heard a man's voice out over the ocean, calling my name. Next time he calls, ask him if he has a friend for me. I'm serious. How can you be serious? It was the wind. Are those foghorns? Perhaps. But it sounded like... Paul. It's been two years now, Christine. I know. But for a moment, out over the ocean, I felt very close to him again. He used to love the ocean, you know, especially at night. He'd go racing down to the beach for a swim, no matter how late it was. And usually I'd be fool enough to go with him. If any husband of mine ever chased me into the ocean in the middle of the night, I'd shoot him. He did a lot of crazy things, some of them bad. But I don't think I could ever love another man the way I love Paul. Chris, you've got to stop talking like this. You're getting morbid. Oh, it's not as bad as all that, Brad. It is bad. Look at this dress. You can't wear black when you're going out on a date. Looks as if you were still, well... In mourning? Well, yes. I just happen to like black, that's all. I know, but just for tonight. It isn't exactly appropriate. And Chris, don't wear your wedding ring tonight, either. Why not? It might make it awkward for Martin. Oh, is Martin going to propose again tonight? Well, he might. And he can't very well put an engagement ring on your finger if that's already there. By the way, what kind of a ring has Martin bought for me? An enormous diamond with... Oh, Chris, you will say yes tonight, won't you? I suppose I'd better. Otherwise, he might sue you for breach of promise. Oh, darling, I'm so excited. And I've got just the right dress all picked out for you. Will you wear it? Anything you say. And bring out my new ermine, will you? You know, Chris, I think your cloak with the sequins might look better on you tonight. I, uh, take it you have a date for tonight, too. As a matter of fact, I have. All right, I'll wear the sequins, you wear the ermine. Well, if you insist, thanks. I like your hair like that. But you could do with a little more lipstick. And uh, you could do with a little less. Do you suppose it's Martin? You know Martin would never honk a horn at a lady. It's probably your young man. By the way, which young man is it tonight? It's, you know, I've forgotten. Have a good time and come home early. Well, I can't do both. Then you come home early. You come home engaged. Mrs. Faber's residence. Yes, sir. Mrs. Faber. It's Mr. Abbott, ma'am. Thank you, Emily. I'll take it here. Hello, Martin. Don't tell me you're standing me up. No, no. It, it, it's just that some idiotic client came into the office at the last minute, and I... Well, no, I know it's not serious, but I, I particularly didn't want to have anything interfere with tonight. Well, no, you see, I wanted to show you that I'm not always the lawyer with his mind on cases and affidavits. No, I'm really the romantic type with my mind on you. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was a nice speech. I, uh, I dreamed it up this afternoon in felony court. It doesn't matter if we're a little late, Martin. The first act's no good anyway. I'll walk over along the beach to your house, then you won't have to waste the time driving over here. Oh, I wouldn't do that. But I want to walk over, Martin. I'll enjoy it. Oh, of course it's safe. Now stop talking like an old maid. Goodbye. It is dark down there, ma'am. And you, Emily, stop talking like Martin Abbott. Lock the patio door after me, will you? Good night.
frightened. You made a decision tonight that angered him, and now you're fighting to sustain it. Well, you have all my hopes fighting with you, madame. Uh, I felt you were married. I saw your husband dead and you moving toward a new marriage. And I see I was wrong. <laughs> Sometimes I am. Good night. Goodbye. Wait. You weren't mistaken. My husband died two years ago. Mm, I felt I could not be wrong. I saw him, dead, and his car in flames. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't understand how you know all this. I suppose people do talk. Do you live around here? No, I wish I did live on the ocean. Here is my name of where I live. Alexis, psychic consultant. Oh. I see you place me in the same category with fortune tellers, snake charmers, and magicians. Oh, well, many people do. But you must know who I am. How else would you know all these things? Perhaps because we are very much alike. You and I, free spirits, both of us. Like my friend here. We like the night and the mist of the ocean. The wind whispers to us and the sand feels cool under our feet. We're not like, I don't know, I have his name now, like Martin. There's nothing wrong with Martin. Of course not. If only he would understand how little he understands. Well, Martin is very logical. Yes, that's why you should marry him. Oh, even free spirits have to come in out of the night sometimes and put on their shoes, pay their bills, go to the dentist, and of course, family dinners on Sunday. You really shouldn't be so irritated by his little mannerisms, like uh, when he clears his throat, <coughs> announcing that he's going to kiss you any minute, or when he counts off all his plans on the tips of his fingers. How could... How? I can't tell you how I know these things. But it hardly matters, does it? Since we're not going to meet again. Christine? Chris? Oh, over here, Martin. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> well, you certainly had me scared. What kept you so long? Well, I was talking to this man. Well, he was here. How could I have imagined him? He was fantastic enough. Well, let's get going. Oh, I, I've torn my dress. Martin, I'll have to go back to the house. All right. Uh, we'll go to your house first. Uh, skip the theater, directly to the Blue Angel. Uh, what's the matter? Uh, nothing. It's it's just that it's so late and I'm a little upset. Could we make it some other night? Of course. You sure you understand? When it concerns you, Christine, there's nothing I don't understand. Take this off my hands or I'll have to wear it to the office tomorrow. Fix yourself a drink. I've got to change this torn dress. Right. Flattering. I should have thought of this in the first place. This is much better than any nightclub. Yes, and just think, no head waiter, no smoke, no people. And at the end of the evening, no check. Oh, Martin, you think in such practical terms. I'm a very practical man. For instance, I just said that to make you pout. The better to do this. I've been trapped. Right. Now, if you'll just step over here to the sofa by the fire. Another trap? Definitely.
Darling, what's the matter? That music. Well, it's just a phonograph. But we don't have that record. Of course you do. It was right on top of the cabinet. That's strange. What's the matter, Chris? I'm sorry, but that was Paul's favorite prelude. I've heard him play it a hundred times right here in this room. Turn it off, will you? No, I won't. Look, darling, Paul's been gone too long for you to act like this. I know. Chris, I'm not saying this for my sake, but your whole life's ahead of you. You can't waste it probing into the past. If I can't make you forget Paul, well, find someone else who can. You're right, Martin. I'm sorry I acted like a child. Would you get me a drink? Right here, ready for you. So you think I should go find somebody new? Uh, only if it's absolutely necessary. But I've been so out of touch with people lately, especially men. What do you expect me to do, bring some around? Well, that would be very nice of you. Only you know how hard it is for me to meet new people. Uh, well, I can see I'll just have to propose to you. Oh, Martin, I talked you into it. And you sure did. And very fortunately for you, I just happened to have an engagement ring on me. Martin, it's lovely.
darling. Janet. What happened? I don't know. The music. Paul. Let me help you up. Oh. Look, darling, you must have had a nightmare. It's all right now. It's over. You're awake and I'm here. Janet, it wasn't a dream. The windows blew open. What's so unusual about a window blowing open? My engagement ring was gone. The flowers were all with it. Chris, look. But the picture, Paul's picture. You see, just a bad dream. I was awake. My wedding gown there in the closet. It came toward me. I swear it did. It's just your bathrobe. You probably pulled the door open like this, and it flung out like that. And my wedding dress isn't there? How could it be, Chris? It's been locked in the trunk room for years. It wasn't a nightmare, I tell you. I saw those things. I think it was Paul, and he doesn't want me to marry. You've got some feeling that it's not loyal to Paul if you marry again. It's on your conscience, and it makes you dream. Why don't you talk it over with an analyst? He wouldn't understand. He'd think I was losing my mind. Nobody would understand. Except perhaps Alexis. Alexis? Just somebody I once met. Come on. Get to bed. After three, you haven't got time for any more dreams tonight. Janet, while you're up, would you get me a glass of water? Thanks. Janet. I was supposed to be the baby in the family. Here, give me that water. Move over, baby. Good night, Chris. Good night. Childish, isn't it? I think the ocean and the fog were more effective. <laughs> I agree. But in my work, I deal with many different kinds of minds. Generally speaking, I think you could say that three types of people come here to see me. The first, a fairly large group, come here to scoff. And sometimes a few of them remain to pray. The second have childlike, credulous minds. They long to believe. They're tired and sad and need comfort. Yet all this helps them. It creates an atmosphere, you see? A mood like music. And in it, they find a few brief moments of comfort which helps them to continue with their gray little lives. And so I do not think it is so childish after all, do you? And the third group? Ah. 
The third group is those of us who honestly explore the secrets of the outer world. I feel that you have come here today to join that group. Well, I... I did want to talk to you about something. I know. He was close to you last night. And he's close to you now. But wait. Maybe I should repel him. Not bring him closer. Why? His presence is so strong, it, it might be dangerous. How could Paul's presence possibly be dangerous to me? To your plans. You want to get married and lead what is termed a normal life. But if Paul is trying to reach me, then I want to help him. Have you thought what people will think? What Martin will think? I'm not afraid to think as I choose. Then, Christine, if you have the courage and the will to explore, I will help you. Now relax. Let your mind be free and receptive. Janet, you do have a tendency to dramatize and... Stop treating me like a child. I tell you, she's been going to see him for weeks and... Shh. Now, do you believe me? Mm. She's been reading psychic books, too. And talking about Paul as if he were still alive. It gives me the creeps. Let's go. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to get a detective, see what he can find out about this, this spook chaser. For 20 years, I've been operating among these phony mediums as a private detective. And I've yet to find one concrete bit of evidence of communication with the dead. But my sister's absolutely convinced. He's told her things he couldn't know, unless he were psychic. He's probably gone to a lot of trouble to investigate her past. They're thorough and clever. What I can understand is Christine falling for such drivel. You'd be amazed at the people who do. No, thanks. Now, there's a millionaire right in this town who wouldn't buy a bag of popcorn without consulting his medium. What's this one's name? Alexis. It's a new one on me. Then they change their names often enough. How about a description? There's a picture of him in this pamphlet he wrote. Oh, this? <laughs> I used to be a magician. That's how I got into this racket. Chicago on a case once. A young man named Maru swindled a society lady out of a whole hat full of money. That's Alexis. He certainly used to look corny. That's Alexis. We can report him to the police. What charge? He served a stretch and that's that. But at least Christine will be through with him. I mean, if we can prove he's a crook. How can we identify him? Well, if you go out there and try to get his fingerprints. But I think the only times these fakes are really psychic is when there's a detective around. Mm, they, uh, they look in their crystals and see you coming. Maybe we could send somebody you wouldn't know. Oh, no, I, I think that...
Your name, please. Harper. Mrs. Charles Harper. Not Mrs. Charles G. Harper. Yeah. I mean, no. Now concentrate, and soon your thoughts will merge with mine. Perhaps both hands would be better. Yes, yes, so much better. I can feel your vibrations much more clearly now. Oh, but, but your pulse is racing. Are you excited, nervous? I, no. Oh, but of course, this problem is troubling you. The question you wrote comes to me, but but faintly, almost as though it were false. Oh, but another question comes through. With all the power and strength of love and truth, you are concerned about someone you love, a woman, your sister. Is it your sister? Yes. Older than you, but still you have a maternal, protective feeling about her. In many ways, you are more mature than she. Golly, I'm glad somebody finally realized that. Of course, you didn't always feel that way. Once you were jealous of her. You envied her popularity in her pretty clothes, and you used to try them on when she went out. And this suited you because there is an air of, of maturity and sophistication about you. In many ways, especially intellectually, you are much older than the many young men who admire you. You know, I'd noticed that. Does this feel uncomfortable to you? I... I, I think I'll have a cigarette. Mrs. Harper? Uh, Mrs. Harper? May I? Do you know why I wanted to? No. Nor do I need to. It is enough for me to know that you wanted them. Alexis, I hope that nothing you've done to help my sister will get you into trouble with the police. I mean, if they should investigate you or your past life, would they find anything that would make trouble for you? Well, there are, there are many things in my life of which I'm ashamed. But, and this may sound strange, the memory that I cherish is a term in prison. Oh, there are many brave men who were imprisoned in their fight for science and truth, and I'm proud to be one of them. I think you may be able to understand this. Oh, but anyway, do with this as you think best. I trust you.
Janet. Oh, hello, Martin. Did you get the fingerprints? Yes. Good. And I erased them. Oh, Martin, he isn't at all the kind of a man we thought he was. <laughs> Oh, hello, dear. Did you get the day off? Not time to. Yeah, Mrs. Faber. No, Mrs. Ah. Faber. I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> and how is our client? She's hooked good. Mm, good she is. Huh? And uh, does she feel that her beloved husband is close to her? I'm surprised she hasn't asked me to lay an extra place at the dinner table. Here's a photograph of her parents. It was in the trunk where I found the wedding dress. Oh, that would be very useful. When are you going to put the bite on her? Oh, Vivian, you put things so crudely. I imagine that very soon Mrs. Faber is going to press money on me to continue my psychic research. Good. I'm getting sick of this Swedish accent. I need a new role. Oh, I have a new assignment for you. Mm. Straight from the obituary column. A lonely millionaire who... I have no more appointments today. Oh, here. Help me get these things out of the way. What do you pay for those chunks of glass these days? Three dollars a piece. It used to be a dollar ninety-five. You know, somebody ought to do something about this high cost of living. You should complain. You're selling them for twenty-five bucks to your psychic students. I used to. But who am I to fight inflation? I'm charging fifty now. Hmm. Expensive car. Expensive clothes. I would say... No brains and lots of money. So long as you're here, Vivian, you might as well check the car for me. There might be some papers or something in the glove compartment. Okay. I'll use a turban in case you find out something. I mean, I've, I've heard... <laughs> I'd rather not tonight, Martin, really. I'm much too tired. Well, let's decide about Friday later. Call me tomorrow. Good night. Will that be all, Mrs. Faber? That's all, Emily. Thanks. Chris, hmm? let you and I spend the evening together. If you're tired, we could go to a movie. Well, actually, I'm busy tonight, Janet. I have an appointment. Chris, don't see Alexis tonight. Don't see him ever again. Janet, I thought we'd agreed not to discuss this. I'm not attacking Alexis, honest. I think he'd be very good for certain people. But not for me. Well, you see, when some people meet a fascinating personality, they're swept right off their feet. Like me? Yes. But other people can be more objective, like me. It's true, Chris. In many ways, I'm more mature than you are. Janet, I have lived through most of your growing pains, and oftentimes you've been insufferable, but tonight... You this see? Is... You can't be objective. 
You're getting sore just because I'm trying to give you some good advice. Give me advice, Janet, please. It is good advice. Alexis agrees with me. Alexis agrees with you? You see, I've talked to him a few times about your problem. I... I went to his house. How did you find him? Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. You know, he has one of the most vibrant personalities. And you came to this conclusion while discussing my problem? Well, we talked a little about me, too. Janet. Good night. I'll leave you alone with your objectivity. A disturbance. If we are to reach the outer world tonight, we must leave behind us all thoughts that are hostile and on a low emotional level. Now, Janet, this is your first seance. There must be some skepticism in your mind. Oh, no. Or perhaps only in your subconscious mind. But nevertheless, we shall proceed under test conditions. If you would be good enough to hold this key for me. And Christine. Will you tie my wrists together securely? Oh, there's no need to do that, Alexis. I have every faith in you. Oh, but I insist, for my own sake. Here, Chris, you take the key. I'll tie his wrist. All right, Janet. Start with the right one. Tie one knot in the center. Tightly. That's good. Now, tie my hands behind my back. Very tightly. Thank you. Now lock the cabinet. So do you know that I cannot possibly move from this chair? Now, Christine, will you switch off the light? The switch is right in behind you. The room must be completely dark. Sit down on the table. Clasp your hands together tightly with a key between your palms. If you see anything at all, do not move around or cry out.
sure like to know what's going on in there. If he's staging a seance, it'd be a good opportunity to prove he's a phony. Let's sneak around back. There may be a window we can look through. I'll climb through. Showing you what a pony this man is. Where's the key? If you think he's still in here... What is it? He's quick on his feet, I'll say that for him. How could he get out when I locked him in? He could show you if he wanted to. You tie a knot like this, and then... Martin, this is dreadful. Yes, it is. I'm afraid I must insist you don't come here again. Insist? By what right do you insist? Well, we're engaged. Well, even if we were married, I'd think as I pleased. And I won't close my mind to truth just because you don't happen to understand them. Truth, poppycock. Be logical, Chris. Be logical. Pardon me, Mr. Abbott. Do you think you could possibly defer your discussion long enough to untie this rope? Oh, I'm sorry, Alexis. I'll do it. I happen to understand more about these things than you do. Do you realize that man has a criminal record? Alexis told us he was once in prison, if that's what you mean. Sometimes a prison record is something to be proud of. I'm terribly sorry about this interruption, Alexis. Hmm. I saw him. I saw Paul. Uh, we will bring him back. Even if you could bring him back, she'd be better off if he stayed where he is, dead. She never meant anything to him but money. Martin. He'd been married and divorced before, each time with cash settlements. If he'd lived, he'd have made you miserable and ended up where he belongs, in jail. I never thought you'd attack a dead man with lies he can't answer. Yes, it's in the records. When Martin disappeared, did you or did you not ask me to investigate? Yes. Well, in the course of my snooping, I found a second Mrs. Faber, divorced in Las Vegas just six months before he married you. I think he went over there to see her. I never could find her, though, and Paul was dead, so... Seems very strange that if it were true, you didn't find it necessary to tell Mrs. Favor. Yes, I suppose it is strange. And very silly to try and protect the girl you love. She only runs as fast as she can to another phony like you. Come on, Hoffman, let's get out of here. I'm going so soon? I hope we might stay around a while. You should stay. You'd soon learn what amazing powers Alexis has. I'm always willing to learn. Perhaps you'd like to resume the seance. Yes. Under real test conditions. And have you reported me for conducting a seance? I should say not. Uh, he probably could report you now. But if you'll sit down here at this table, and while we all hold hands like real good friends, if you can make any of your spirits walk or talk, I think Mr. Hoffman will let it ride this time. It's ridiculous. Show them, Alexis. Yes, Alexis. Do. I'm afraid under such hostile circumstances, any contact with the spirit world would be practically impossible. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that patter routine before. I know it's easier when you can run around the room in the dark. It doesn't run around in the dark. Go on, Alexis. Let them see for themselves what you can do. Okay, let's go. on the premises for tight spots like this. We checked, you see, to make sure you hadn't. Shh, don't talk so loud. You mean we'll frighten the ghosts?
Christine. You see? Christine. It's Paul. It's his voice. I didn't mean to frighten you ever. But I had to get through to you somehow. I've always loved you. You know that. Yes, Paul. And if you could only believe, we could be together for always. There wasn't anybody out there. Twenty years, there's never anything like this. If everybody will excuse me, this has been a terrible strain. Come on, Chris. I'll take you home. so startled about. You're used to raising the dead, aren't you? Although I guess with me it was a little easier, because I'm only legally dead. You know, I've been watching you ever since my uh, widow started coming to you, Alexis. I find your methods quite amusing. Hmm. Excellent. How do you get out of that rope thing? Manipulation. But how did the you... The cabinet? Just push a button and the idiots reach for their checkbooks. It isn't quite as simple as all that. There's a lot of psychology involved and research. Sounds dangerously like work. However, your bag of tricks can be useful to us in our present plans. We, um... Uh... Have plans? I didn't help you out tonight just for the fun of it, my friend. I can use you. You see, I need money. A lot of it. I don't understand. If you went back to Christine, you could have anything you want. You don't seem to have a very analytical mind. No, but Christine still loves you. She... Oh. You mean if you weren't dead, the police might want to know who it was they found burnt to death in your car, hmm? Exactly. Have I been using the wrong piece of music? What? Oh, no, no. You have the right one for Christine. I used this one for my first wife. Was it her ashes they found in the car? It was me they found in the car. Don't forget it. Perhaps I should point out that I'm in a very curious position. Since I'm believed dead, I could even kill a man. Nobody think of looking for me. You're in a curious position too, Alexis. You can't tell anybody I'm alive without exposing yourself. That's right, I can't. It is a very curious position. And a profitable one. I don't think it's too premature to congratulate you upon an extremely advantageous marriage. Marriage? Well, come, come, my friend. You must be prepared to make some small sacrifices. You don't expect me to marry Christine. No, no, the little one, Janet. She's still young enough to be dazzled by you. From then on, getting that estate will be like taking candy away from a baby. I don't think Christine would allow it. I'll take care of Christine. I'm a little rusty on this one. I'll have to practice. Have this piano tuned, will you? Thank you, Lindley. 
Oh, no, ma'am, not for you. Not after the night you've been having. That's for you. Hot milk? Yes, ma'am. I'd rather have the coffee. I'll see that she drinks it, Emily. All right, I'll take it, but it won't do any good. You should really try and get more sleep, Christine. But I just can't. I'm never alone anymore. I, I keep hearing his voice now and seeing his face. It should comfort me, I suppose, but it's been frightening. Drink your milk while it's hot. It'll help. Alexis, do you suppose we've made a mistake? That first day when I came to your house, you said it might be better to repel Paul's spirit instead of bringing it closer. Perhaps you were right. Perhaps I was right. Then would it be better to try to break the contact now and not go... It's too late. At this stage, I could never break the contact. We'll have to finish what we started. If it would only bring me rest. Well, let's, let's begin the seance now. I think that before we start, you should relax. And I should be more familiar with the surroundings. It is very difficult for me in a strange house. Perhaps if I walked around the outside for I'll a while... I'll show you. We can even go to the ocean. Go ahead, Janet. I'm feeling rather tired. along spirit lines. You do? Yes. I've been reading and studying. I think maybe I'm mediumistic. Oh. You know that seance we had at your house when Paul appeared? Yeah. Was that Paul's first visitation? Alexis. Oh. Oh, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. You see? Maybe it's because I was there, all tuned in and sensitive. Well, it could be. Did you ever see a better spirit manifestation? No, darling. That was an all-time record. Are you thinking about my sister? Yes. Yeah. She's very attractive, isn't she? Most men admire Chris. But Christine will always belong to Paul. I suppose that's true. I wish you wouldn't be so unhappy. Do you suppose they'll be joined together someday in celestial companionship through all eternity, like it says in the books? Yes, I'm sure they will. Alexis, do you think I'd make a good celestial companion? Darling, I think you'd be wonderful. And we'd love each other through all eternity? even longer. Alexis, why don't we start right here on the Earth plane?
I've come for you, dear. Hurry, Chris. Paul, wait. I'm frightened. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm opening the door, but not very wide. You're not exactly welcome here. Where's Emily? It's Thursday, Mr. Abbott. Her day off. Where's Frida? Frida left yesterday. She said she thought the house was haunted. And I can see what she means. I want to talk to Mrs. Faber. I don't think she wants to talk to you. Janet. Where's Chris? She's in bed. She's making herself ill with this morbid nonsense. Oh, it isn't that. Chris had a fall last night on the cliff. She might have killed herself if Alexis hadn't caught her. What was she doing on the cliff? Well, she thought she heard Paul calling. Janet. We'll always be together, Chris. Together, always. Yes, Paul. You'll always be mine, Chris. Say. Chris wouldn't have a doctor. You've got to be logical about this. But she's not badly hurt. She's just bruised and shaken. Well, in the first place, she's in a state of hysteria. In the second place, she shouldn't be in this house. Everything in it reminds her of Paul. And finally, she shouldn't be left alone for one second. There's no telling what she might do. But I'm with her all the time. I haven't left... Chris. 
Chris, are you all right? Yes, of course. What's in that bottle? It's just aspirin. I've got a headache. Chris, it's dangerous for you to stay here. You need rest and care, perhaps in a hospital. You're trying to separate us. I won't go to a hospital. I won't leave this house. Only until you're better. Chris. No. You try to drive him away again. Now get out. Get out. I'll leave before I upset her anymore. I'll see you at the door, Martin. They left the room. Then you can resume the treatment. If you hadn't tried to play the hero last night, all this wouldn't be necessary. I had to save Janet, didn't I? You're not falling in love with her, are you? Look, if I'm going to marry into this estate, there's got to be somebody for me to marry. Just by way of making conversation, that wife of mine in Las Vegas, the one who tried to back out on me and wanted her cash settlement back, I settled with her, but not for cash. Now, if you should back out on me, I wouldn't hesitate to settle with you either, Alexis, because... I know because you're in such a curious position. Tell me you wanted money that badly. I've given it to you just to get rid. Paul. Oh. Yes, I'm alive. Legally, I'm dead. I'm going to stay that way. But if you're alive, I won't be able to. It's too bad you came down here, Janet.
You're losing quite a bit of blood, aren't you, Alexis? Spirits don't need any blood. Do you think bullets can harm us ghosts? mistake. I started with seven shells. I have one in the chamber. Alexis, you were wonderful. Yes. I guess there must be a better side to my nature. But now you must forget me. No, never. I don't need a crystal to see that your future is bright, Janet. Don't you go clinging to the past. I lived by feeding people's desire to escape the present. But you can't escape for long. Well, Lexus, I'm afraid for you. I'll be all right. I'll find some spirits that want to contact people. Janet, please. Fly away, my friend. I won't need you anymore. 